You are watching the Canadian Public. Dining Room Table Reviews is brought to you by Circuit Design Corporation, creators of BPAL, a bulk procurement and logistics management solution for the pulp and paper, ethanol, recycled materials, and food manufacturing industries. For more information, call or visit their website at cdcorp.ca. Hello, I'm François Caron and welcome back to my dining room table. In this episode, I'll be reviewing the entry-level Canon HFR10 high-definition camcorder. I'll also be comparing it against the picture quality of the Canon HF200 high-definition camcorder, as well as the ergonomics of an old Canon FS100 standard definition camcorder, just to see where the HFR10 fits between the two. The Canon HFR10 camcorder includes a 530 milliamp hour battery, a power adapter, instruction manuals and application software, USB cable, and both composite and component audio video cables. Still no HDMI cable. The Canon HFR10 includes front mounted stereo microphones, full flip and swivel LCD screen, tripod screw mount and USB, AV, headphone, and microphone jacks. The HFR10 does not include a mode selection jog dial or a video light as found on the HF200 and FS100 camcorders, two features that were more annoying than useful. The HFR10 also doesn't include a shoe mount, filter thread, or photo flash as found on the HF200, but it does include the FS100's highly effective single piece lens cover. The HFR10 is as light and easy to handle as the older FS100, with none of the hand cramps inflicted by the rather heavy HF200. The external controls are easily accessible, but you will need to practice using the zoom lever a bit. The in-camera controls include many of the same settings and adjustments as found on other high-definition Canon camcorders, with a few items left out such as the manual shutter and manual exposure controls. The 530 milliamp hour battery delivers about an hour's worth of recording time at the highest quality recording setting. High capacity batteries available from various sources will last on average about an hour and a half. The HFR10 includes 8 gigabytes of internal memory, providing about an hour's recording time at the highest quality setting. The more expensive HFR11 camcorder includes 32 gigabytes of internal memory, while the lower cost HFR100 has no internal memory. All three camcorders support minimum class 4 SDHC memory cards. The HFR10 supports two recording resolutions along with various compression levels and frame rates, all recorded in the MPEG-4 AVC H.264 format. Just one problem. The video resolution of the image sensor is lower than any of the camcorder's recording resolutions. So how does this affect the picture quality? Well, there's only one way to find out. Under both sunny and overcast conditions, the Canon HFR10's color balance does appear to be a bit warmer and slightly more saturated when compared with other Canon camcorders, but not so much as to make the image appear unpleasant. The HFR10's digital image stabilization is typical in that it's still not as good as optical image stabilization, but it is above average for its class. Watch the bus. Rolling shutter. That was about as bad as it ever got. The HFR 10's 20 times zoom definitely pushes the limits as to how close you can get to the action before you need a tripod. 
Oh, I hear a train coming. And I happen to have my Canon HF200 with me. Try to guess which scene came from which camcorder. This is the view from my open office window, perfect for a resolution test. When compared against the Canon HF200 camcorder and its full HD image sensor, the Canon HFR10 with its fake HD sensor does suffer from some detail loss, but not as much as I was afraid it would actually lose. This was from the battery test with the windows closed and the office quiet. Listen carefully. Do you hear the rattle? It's the autofocus. And I'm not the only one with this problem. To get rid of it, switch over to manual focus. Just be careful with your close-up shots. Now for the low light tests. Using the P mode, the HFR10's low light performance varied between fugly and a complete disaster. The cinema mode did deliver better results, but the colors were faded and the contrast and brightness were a bit off. The HFR10's night mode, however, was a big surprise. The image didn't suffer from excessive pixelation, low frame rates, or gray fogs, but the contrast and brightness were just a bit darker than the way I like it. The Flaming Fountain test revealed that focus can be properly maintained as long as you don't zoom in too close and too fast on the subject matter. Okay, let's go crazy here. Night mode, PF30 frame rate, XP plus format, dynamic image stabilization, and a street full of hockey fans. The lighting was poor and the crowds unruly, but the combination of night mode and dynamic image stabilization made it possible to record decent and reasonably stable video footage even under these hectic conditions. However, dynamic image stabilization also increases the reach of the lens which reduces the HFR10's wide-angle capabilities, and it reduces the effective resolution of the image down to 1360 by 765 pixels. That's 720p territory, not full HD. All right, this is getting weird even for this city. While it might not be a true high-definition camcorder, the Canon HFR10 did manage to produce high-quality video material in the daytime, as well as perfectly serviceable video material at night, all in a compact and convenient package that won't break your wrist or your wallet. But the noisy autofocus system could ruin your quiet shots, and the lack of a better matching and resource-friendly 1280x720 recording option means you'll still need a powerful computer to properly play and process the fake full HD files. So if you're already stuck having to spend money on a new computer, forget the HFR10 and spend an extra hundred bucks or two on a real full HD camcorder that doesn't rattle. That's it for the Canon HFR10 camcorder. I'm François Caron. Thank you for watching.